Hi. Yay! There you are, loud and clear. Where's loud and clear? I believe you're in California somewhere, Julie. Whereabouts are you? Yes, I'm in uh, the central coast of California. I'm two hours north of Los Angeles. Okay. And happy to be here with you all. I know, it's so super cool. Have you seen my t-shirt tonight? I have to tell Did you see my t-shirt? Let me see, where are you? I don't know which. Oh, I love it. Look, there's Sparky. <laughs> this, let me tell everybody, um, this lady, Julie, we, we were friends online for years. I met her partner at the time when Myrtle and I went to Montreal to do a conference. And the only people we could find in Montreal in town was this dude called um, um, Vergados. And he had a runner called Vegas in a really cool car. And we ordered some weed, and you wouldn't believe it. The guy, Vegas, the runner, came to the front of the um, expo center, and I got in the passenger seat, and he turned and looked at me and went, Wow, you're old. And that was the start of my relationship with Skunk Magazine. And when I was in my hour of need, and I needed some weed in Montreal, Skunk came to the rescue, and that's because... And now I know Julie because you're a co-owner of Skunk Magazine. And we met in America last year for the first time. So I've been trying to get you on the show for a little while because, um, you're, well, we consider you a whole bunch of fun and you're a great business lady. And what we wanted to know from South Africa today was, how's it going in your part of the world with all of this strangeness that is going on, apart from cannabis and everything? How's it going with your lockdown and and what are your rules? And can you go out to the shops? Is there army in the street? What's happening? Um, <clears throat> it is a full-fledged, you know, across the, the nation uh, lockdown. Um, I was just reading um, some news from California just this morning that... Um, I, I think we're past... I think we're in the 14th. Don't quote me on the day but we're like two weeks into being required to be at home. And it was, uh, you know, don't go out unless absolutely mm -hmm. necessary for food um, and, you know, absolute emergency situations was the general rule, not martial law uh, yet. Um, just that uh, stay inside, um, don't go anywhere, um, just stay inside. And, um, and take all the necessary precautions. What I was happy to hear this morning was that we were really um, look like that we could be heading into the situation that's happening in New York. Last week, we didn't know, you know, uh, because there was zero testing, really no testing at all in, in California. Uh, I was looking and looking, trying to find a place, trying to see... Um, my grandmother, who's 92, who we came to stay with, um, she was supposed to go to the hospital. Uh, something was going on with her chest, and she could not go, and she has not been able to go. Um, luckily, she's feeling much better. But, um, yeah, we didn't know if last week if we were going to see, because of this irresponsibility of people just kind of going out and doing things as normal, if we were going to see huge spikes as we're seeing in New York. And it looks like over this week's time that this stay at home is being honored in California. Okay. Um, and and it's, it's working. It's paying off in big areas like San Francisco, which right. would have been extremely dangerous. As we all know, you guys spent time there when you were visiting. Um, I just also heard that it seems that it's stopping. While new cases are still coming on, it doesn't seem that it's uh, going at the accelerated rate that's happening in New York right now. Interesting. It's the same kind of parallel universe that we've got going here. I, this flattening of the curve thing, I think, may well be working, but I don't know what to believe anymore. We're just trying to keep mm -hmm. ourselves together and keep it together and deal with... Still, we got loads of queries coming into Fields of Green for All. It never stops. People... We actually got a message today in our inbox uh, do you sell cigarettes? Because <laughs> um, cigarettes have been banned. There's no cigarettes or tobacco, cigarettes or alcohol for the next three weeks in South Africa. So, that, but we've got, as you know, we've got this constitution. We've got this constitutional right to be able to use cannabis. So, 
it's like we got the upper hand. We we spoke to somebody in um, in Las Vegas last week, and he said that the 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 cannabis shops in Nevada are essential items. Is it the same in California? Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. That has been uh, definitely the silver lining here uh, for me, um, just to watch this. Uh, I, you know, 10 days ago, I was talking with John, my partner at the magazine, and we were really kind of up in the air because we didn't know how our businesses would be impacted and we didn't know who would be able to endure with a shutdown, shutdown ourselves included. And... Then last week, the, a lot of these kinds of, of victories were made for cannabis to be determined as essential. And that was huge. That was huge that, that you know, um, no, you know, we cannot have these businesses closed because millions of people are going to be hurt uh, if, if that happens. And so I think that that was uh, one of the small I guess we had to celebrate the small good things that are happening amidst all of this challenge. And I would say that is a definitely a small um, victory for us in the cannabis industry who fought so long, is that in crisis, yes, we do need our cannabis as a medicine. Um, we, will, we will be able to continue. And so for us, uh, on a very real level, um, we've lost a couple of businesses. Uh, in this last two weeks that um, could not handle it. Um, and then others are fighting hard and standing with us. So I, I am, Jules, I, that is a huge thing that I think is going to protect a lot of cannabis businesses um, that may have not been able to endure. That's really cool. That's really cool news. And the, and the protocol to be able to, in your hood, if you wanted to get something to smoke and you knew the dispensary downtown, do you have to, do, you, do they get deliver it or do you have to go? Is it, what, what, what's the protocol to actually, can you just dial some weed in your part of the world? Yeah, well, that's an interesting question. I mean, the thing that we're dealing with in California, as you know, is under Prop 64, before this crisis ever happened, cannabis businesses were struggling and fighting to survive in a very unfair, uh, kind of uh, unequitable scenario um, in California in general. And we've seen this happen in other uh, areas, states and countries that have legalized, is, is, um, is that the small mom and pops fight to survive. Um, what I've seen is that okay, we're still fighting to survive. Now it just got even more challenging. And what I see a lot of businesses doing is, is moving and being agile, which they've been trained to do in the decades that they've been fighting against all of these different challenges and hurdles that we all face to do business and, um, and to provide medicine to people against, you know, under duress. And so, yeah, I see a lot of people moving to do delivery, moving to do um, curb curbside service. Though I've seen that there's issue with, issues with that as well. So then they're just limiting the number of guests that can come in and sterilizing everything. Um, but I do see um, a surge towards delivery, which I think is great. Um, I think that we, you know, and, and then I've been, you know, being on the Central Coast right now, I mean, the black market is still thriving. Uh, it was under 64, and it, it's going to remain so. And I'm, yeah, I think that this is not going to quell it. It's, Excellent. <laughs> we're still, we still got another, you know, many, many years, I feel, to fight for an equitable and just system to do business properly. And bi and business in general, but in print, you're in print media. It's still quite a brave thing to be in. Everyone's a, an online platform, and you still have Skunk Magazine. I want to show you something else, Julie. Look at this. Look at these collectors' items of Skunk Magazine. Can you believe this shit? These are these are for from 2015. Women of Weed in 2015. These this is our Skunk Magazine. 
the Skunk Magazine collection in the hot box, so including the glorious. I love it. In, yeah, I know completely. Um, so we we've got these scattered around the place. I gotta send you more tools. I gotta send you guys the current issue with Jack on the cover. Nice. With Jack. Okay, well uh, that's so, a deal. As long as long as you pop me your address. And I'll pop I'll pop some in the mail for you. Cool, as long as long as you so, can yeah. oh, is that am I what? dead have I gone again? No. Now there's all sorts of issues going on in the background here. Um Julie, have you put yeah, Julie uh, are you still there, yeah? I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Um we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna swap over a bit now. It's been really, really cool chatting to you and giving us an update of how it is in America and how to get the weed. I've got one last question for you. Our poll tonight, the general poll, every time we do the show we got a, a stoner poll. The question for South Africa tonight is, have you got enough weed for the lockdown? Yeah, I've got loads. It's touch and go, or I've already run out. So what would your answer be for the poll tonight? I've got loads of weed, it's touch and go, or I've already run out. Is that your last joint? <laughs> I'm down, yeah, I'm down to the bottom of the barrel here. Look at this jar. I was just on the phone yesterday <laughs> asking for uh, the troops. I need reinforcements. And, uh. Uh, <laughs> so I'm down to the wire here. Uh, okay. Yes. Well, at the end of the show... At, at the end of the show, we already we'll post the results of how the poll went, and you're one of the statistics now. Okay, so Julie, it's been cool catching okay. up with you. S say hello to Sage. Say hello to your. How many generations have you got in the house at the moment? I've got four. The great grandma, ninety-two, and son, eighteen, Shit. and mom, <laughs> sixty. <laughs> so we're we're all here. We're safe. We're staying in, and uh, it was such a pleasure. I uh, I can't wait to have you on my show, Jules, and I'd love to come on again and tell more about uh, what we're doing at Skunk. Super. We'll love have you guys. back. We'll have you back. Good luck with the lockdown or whatever you want to call it. And say hello to John if you yes, speak to him, all right? everything. Cool. You guys are in our hearts. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. And you're in ours. Thank you. Well, wow, imagine that. Uh, do, you, do you remember, Buzz, when I got back from um, California Dreaming and I told everybody about the, the way you can just dial weed and it just arrives at your door and there's a credit card machine and it's in a nice box. Somebody's going to make a fortune doing that in South Africa at some point. Yeah, as long as there's not 420% tax like in California. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>